Hi everyone, my name is Jen and this is Beast House of Plants where we talk about all things houseplant and home design. Welcome back. So excited for another episode of my series, The Houseplant Alphabet. This is a series where I introduce you to some of my houseplants, we talk about my experience growing them, and what conditions they are currently getting in my home. Just a reminder that I am not a plant expert. This is not a definitive care guide. It's just my experience. All right, let's get into it. So today we are going to be talking about the Neon Pothos, um, also known as the Epipremnum Aurium Neon. If you haven't seen, I have a video called Pothos Identification Guide. I'll link it right here for you. It shows, it goes over all the different varieties of Pothos or Epipremnum that I own, as well as some varieties that I also don't own. Um, and this guy was definitely featured in it. This is a variety of pothos that I didn't really expect to like. I'm really not a huge fan of like this specific shade of green, but I got it because I wanted to collect all of the different varieties of pothos. Um, and honestly, like I've just kind of fallen in love with it. I think it's so, so cool. Mine also started putting out some sport variegation, which is so cool. So like some of these leaves right here, this one and this one, one it's like putting out random variegation this one also has a different variegation pattern and some of the leaves are also like different shades of green from each other so I think that is super super cool uh, this variegation just comes down to like a genetic mutation it's really just luck there's no way for you to force your plant to become variegated um i mean like unless you're like injecting chemicals in it and then even then that's not like a real thing um that's like a different conversation for a different video anyways so um let's talk about the care for this plant so mine is the variegated neon but honestly all epipremnums, all pothos are very, very easy going. So they all really have the same care needs. Um, so right now this one is currently being grown under a grow light. It's being grown under the Sansi grow light. Um, my grow lights are always linked in the description because sometimes you will ask in the comments, they're always linked in my description box. Um, and this one actually is really, really close to grow light just because that was like where I wanted it to be placed like aesthetically in my bedroom and uh, normally I would not put a plant that close to the grow light it's like the grow light is like right here and it's literally like right here in the like a hanging basket I would never recommend you put your plant that close to the grow light because that would likely cause some chlorosis when the leaves all start yellowing because it's too close to a light source um, and also you can end up with a lot of sunburn. The reason that um, this plant so far has been able to withstand it is because the very very light leaf colors genuine generally need a little bit more light than like an all green variety of pothos or like a marbled variety of pothos. It still would not need like this close to grow like more light but um, because the color of the leaves it it would be hard to tell um if it starts to yellow a little bit so even if it does have a little bit of chlorosis like you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell like you would be able to tell if you put like a j pothos that close to light or um something of that variety so so far it's been happy there it's grown quite a bit since i put it there i used to have this in like the darkest corner ever so I'm sure it appreciates like actually finally getting adequate lighting for once um although pretty much all pothos um have like very very flexible lighting needs you really can put this in quite a dark corner and it would likely grow for you um definitely does not mean like zero light like if you don't have any natural lighting you should probably get like a grow light or something like that but very very low lighting and it would still probably grow um however 
if you put it in really really low lighting it's going to start to put out um, progressively smaller leaves and also a lot of the old leaves at the base will start to die off um, so if you want you know nice big full plants you definitely want to put your plant somewhere where it gets a lot of bright light Okay, um, so for this plant, I water it whenever the plant is completely dry like this. So this one is due for a watering. It is completely dry all the way through. And this soil mix is just my normal soil mix. Cocoa core, orchid bark, pumice, horticultural charcoal. Um, it's been in here for almost a year, I think. Um, and it looks good. Um, I don't think that I'm going to transfer this one into Lekka anytime soon just because I really like it and it's like hanging basket situation and you want to see what that looks like um, you can check out my houseplant tour part two where I show you all the plants in my bedroom um, so that's what that looks like so I really like it in the like hanging basket situation and it'll be really difficult for me to water it um, like in Lekka if it's in there so I probably will keep this one in soil for now um, okay so let's talk about fertilizing I don't really stress too much about fertilizing this plant ever I fertilize it basically just whenever I mix up fertilizer for other plants and I have extra I never really like go in with the intent of fertilizing this plant um, and it pretty much just gets whatever is left over from what I'm mixing up from other plants. Um, I fertilized this with fish fertilizer before. I fertilized it with like fox farm before. It's pretty easy going. Um, I would recommend that you do give it like a quick boost once or twice a year. But um, honestly, like even if you don't fertilize this plant, it probably will be fine. Um, yeah. This plant is also great because it will never need added humidity, even if you have it in like really really low humidity it'll be totally fine that's why it's like usually lauded as a great beginner's plant because it grows super super quickly and doesn't really need anything special at all um i used to have another pothos uh training up my wall and that looked really really awesome i use um the command hooks uh that are meant for decorating lights um i do have a photo of that on my instagram i think it's in like tips or something uh, i have like the exact one i use um and that was really really cool they are very very easy to grow up and train up a wall because they grow a lot of aerial roots just naturally and then when you have it trained up a wall it'll also develop additional aerial roots just along the stem to kind of like grab onto the wall. Um, you can also train these up like a moss pole or a totem or something like that and they'll start to produce bigger leaves for you which is super awesome. I think all of my pothos at the moment I have trailing just because I really really like trailing plants. Um, I might change one of my golden pothos because I do have a few. Um, I might start training one of them to go up instead just you know for variety for you know something a little different um, but overall very easy plants very versatile plants. If you feel like your pothos is starting to get like a little bare up top there are a couple cool tricks you can do so first you can either just propagate um, and then plant it back into the pot that's a really easy way to make your plant look really really full these are super easy to propagate all you need to do is cut in between two leaves which would be like here or here that one that is called the internodal spacing because it is the space in between two nodes which is like where basically the bumpy part where there's an aerial root um stick in some water like <laughs> and then they grow roots within like a week um also if you have a plant that's currently being propagated in water and it's taking its sweet time um stick a couple pothos in there and sometimes that will actually speed up um, the root growth, the root growth on other plants as well. Another really cool trick you can do, which I learned from Plantarina like years ago, um, is that you can wrap like one of these sections. You see how there's like already aerial roots on like the nose. Um, you can take one of those sections, just kind of like bend it around the pot, stick it back in the soil, 
like that and then take like a bobby pin or something like that and just stick it in so that the node is touching the surface of the soil and a lot of times it'll just start rooting and then once it fully roots that node will activate and start putting out um like a new vine and you want to see like a demonstration on how to do that if you watch my variegated string of hearts video um i actually demonstrated it on that because i was doing that with my variegated string of hearts it works with a lot of plants that are trailing i think it's called like the bobby pin method I'm trying to think if there's anything else that i haven't told you about this plant i don't think so I think that's it. It's a very, very easy plant. I'm sure you have one, and if you don't have one, you should go get one. These are so fun and so amazing. Um, all right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>